Hello everybody, welcome to Catherine Sews. So my friend Judy sent me this post on Instagram from a knitwear designer who kind of mashed together a cardigan and a wool blazer. And I've been obsessed with it ever since. I think it's so beautiful. I can't really call hers an upcycle because she knit that piece that she then kind of mashed onto the jacket. It's so beautiful. I think it's creative and so visually interesting. Like it takes your brain a second to figure out like what is going on there. I am obsessed. And I've been wanting to try to duplicate that ever since my friend Judy sent me that. So I thrifted and thrifted until I found the right jacket and the right cardigan. So I've got this jacket and it has some funny details. The previous owner just turned up the hem of the sleeve and safety pinned that in place. So if you don't have sewing seals, I guess you just do what you gotta do to make it work. It has have a nice pocket detail on it, which I think I'll be able to kind of incorporate into the design. I think that'll work. And it has the nice elbow pads, which I think I'll also incorporate into the new design. So this is the base layer. And then on the under collar of this jacket, it has this nice royal blue color, which isn't gonna show, but it did kind of inspire me. I do like the blue and the gray together. So I kind of was inspired by that color. And then I found this cardigan. It has some nice cable knit designs and it's like, it feels really nice. It feels kind of cottony and it feels quality. It actually feels higher quality than the jacket does, but that's okay. So I've never done anything like this. I don't even know how she did it. Her video doesn't go into a lot of detail, like what's going on on the inside, but I'm gonna try and figure it out. I have no idea if it's gonna turn out nice or not. I'm hoping so because I, I am absolutely obsessed with the look of it, but regardless of how it turns out, I think it's gonna be a really fun process. So if you're interested in that, then let's get busy. <laughs> So the first thing I wanna do is kind of mark the level that I would like the sweater part to come up to. And it's going to go past the pocket, so that's gonna be a little bit of a challenge. We'll see how that works out. Yeah, something like that. So here are a few considerations. The buttonholes on the jacket go horizontally and on the cardigan they go vertically, but they are the same spacing apart. So that is good. So I'll include that buttonhole and so I'll kind of be wiggly through here. The pocket, it doesn't really line up with the pocket on the jacket. So I'm gonna have something to figure out there. I'm not exactly sure. This line, the black trim on the cardigan, I think I'm going to have hang down below the jacket. And then the last consideration is, see there's my side seam on the cardigan. It's about an inch shy of the side seam on the jacket. So I think that I'm gonna have to block it out and kind of stretch that over using steam. And I think I'll be able to manage that. Yeah, the cardigan is unfortunately smaller than the jacket, so it's all gonna have to be blocked out. Let's take this to the iron and do that first. On the jacket, from the center front to the side seam, it's 11 and a half inches. That's not a huge difference. So I'm gonna just try to steam that out. Oh, I went a little extra. That was easier than I thought, and I got even a little bit more than I needed. So let it cool in that position a little bit, and then I'll measure across the back from side seam to side seam. So I've got 20, I need to get three more inches out of this back. Kind of just want to steam it out and then let it cool in that stretched out position. Okay, get in there, that's nice. So this is starting off at 10 and a half. I wanna bring it out to 11 and a half. And it's only the bottom 10 inches or so that I need to block. Oh, there we go. Okay, so now with it nicely blocked out like that and the jacket out of the way, I'm just going to mark about 12 inches from the bottom. And this doesn't have to be a straight line. In fact, I don't want it to be particularly straight might mark it straight, and then I'm gonna cut it wiggly. And I'm doing it in a single layer. Normally I fold things and make them symmetrical, but this I want it to be more or less asymmetrical, like kind of random in the ups and downs here. Okay, here we go. Okay, that was fun. I enjoyed that. And now both sleeves, I think I want the sleeves to kind of hit at the same level. That is all that's left, okay. 
So now it's just a matter of sewing it on and kind of pulling up those little lines like she had, except that I have got the complicating factor of this pocket and this pocket. So I'll put a couple clips at the buttonholes so, so I keep those front edges nicely together. I, I think on hers, the knit wraps around, but I don't have the luxury of that. So now my side seam comes nicely to the side seam. So that worked out great. And I'm just gonna let that black line of trim hang off the bottom here. And maybe what I'll do is I'll just throw a few pins in here and then I'll be able to try it on and see how it's looking and hopefully fall in love with it. Okay, and this is all gonna get cut into a lot more, but I kinda just wanna get it placed and make sure it's gonna kinda work. Okay, button situation. I like these buttons a lot more than these buttons, but I think if I'm gonna keep them on the pocket, then I'm gonna be one short. Oh, but I have the ones off the sleeve, so maybe the buttons from the sleeves can replace the pocket ones. That might work. Okay, so I think I have to remove these buttons as well, but then I wanna place where that button was. I wanna place it right where this button was because the button holes lined up just by sheer luck. The button holes lined up on the other side, so I need the buttons to line up on this side. Now, you know what? It's gonna be a lot easier if I just leave that pocket, especially since the other, the jacket pocket doesn't quite line up. By far the easiest thing is to leave this, just remove that jacket pocket. It's just a patch pocket, so that's gonna come off easily, but I just like it. Oh, maybe, okay, how about if I, okay, here's the idea. I'll remove this pocket, but then I'll maybe try to see if I can use that flap on the outside. And this pocket is stitched twice. It's on there, but good. So that to me sounds like a movie. <laughs> that sounds like it's time to sit on the couch and watch something entertaining while I remove this pocket. So, all right, I'll remove both of these pockets and come right back. Okay, so I removed the pockets from both sides and I tried playing around with it on this side and leaving it just the cardigan pocket on this side. And I just don't think this is really successful. It just kind of adds bulk. I thought it would be an interesting design detail, but no, I think it's better without. It just becomes, you know, super bulky there. So let's get rid of that. But I'm gonna have a couple extra buttons from the sleeves. So they're a bit smaller, but I will put a little button at the bottom of the pocket. So I think I will have enough to do four of the big buttons down the front. If not, I might have to find one like this, which I might have one in my stash, and then two small ones there. That makes life a lot easier if I'm just using the cardigan pocket. But I'm still glad I removed it, removed that other pocket from the inside, because again, it just reduces the bulk. So with black thread, I'm just gonna be sewing around on the trim, and then I'll go in with the blue thread and making all those cuts. That'll be kind of the fun part. So. I just want to anchor it down on the black to start with. Okay, right, let's go to the machine. This is trying to slope inwards like that. And I just want to keep it looking straight. I don't think I'll go right up to the top edge though, because this is all going to get cut into. So I'll stay a little bit below the top edge and I want to make sure these edges stay together. And I've got a regular needle and I'm using a stitch length of four millimeters. I thought a longer stitch length is probably smart because it's all so thick. And it was just a stroke of luck that these buttonholes lined up. Would I be smart to make a buttonhole right there before I sew that? Yes, because can you imagine trying to do that? Okay, back up the train. Let's do the buttonhole first. Quick buttonhole, and it's only one. So I'll we'll start at that pin and go up. Okay. Good, so now I can line up those two buttonholes. I'm glad I thought to do that. As I'm coming across, I wanna make sure that this top edge that I'm sewing along is just maybe a quarter inch or so above the bottom edge of the jacket. And I've already got it pinned to have the side seams lined up. 
And if you're wondering, there's absolutely no reason why I pinned part and clipped part. Either way works just fine. And again, I'll just I'll stop just short of that top there. So it already has a nice feel to it, like the cardigan becoming one with the jacket is such a nice feel. I wonder if I should sneak in a little bit of a machine stitch right across like the inside of the pocket, just so that doesn't sag and bag. And it doesn't have to go the whole way, just a little bit across within the pocket. Okay, back to the cutting table. So now I've just got a doubled thread in black and I just want to stitch those front edges together. So I'll hide my knot inside the cardigan edge. I am not a good thimble user, but I think because I'm sewing through these thicker layers, I think I'll be glad that I have a thimble just to help push that needle through again and again through those thick layers. I'm making pretty big stitches here but it, they don't show, right? Now, the length of the stitch is within all the layers, so it doesn't show at all. And so I feel like I'm kind of stalling a little bit because my mind is still wondering how to distress, deconstruct the top edge of this blue. When I look at the video, I've watched that video a hundred times now, and it's not a tutorial, right? It's a, it's an overview of her artistic creation. And so it doesn't really teach you how to do that. So I'm watching and watching, and I think like, I don't really know how she got it all stringy like that. So I'll just hand sew both front edges like that. And then that's about all the stalling I can do with that. I'm going to have to get serious about cutting into that blue more. All right, so now, here we go. With my favorite little scissors, what if I just start making vertical snips? How do you make a long chain? Oh, it just comes... <laughs> oh dear. Okay, I have to learn how to make those long chains stay and not just let them come right off like that. You okay. This is where a strong understanding of knitting would be super helpful. I had kind of thought the thread would come up, but of course it doesn't on knitting, does it? All the yarns go sideways. There are no yarns that go vertically. So I don't know how she got those long like tendrils to come up. And I don't know, I am really a little bit stumped right now how to get it looking like those long lines like what she has i've pulled off yarn from the top part of the sweater maybe that's fine maybe i could use that or can i just cut sort of peaks like this but it really does need to be skinnier doesn't it i kind of like that these peaks can spread out that helps make it fit onto the jacket better. So if I stitch these last little loops down before they break off, maybe that'll work. So here's a thought. What if I take the little yarn and kind of just do a quick finger crochet? I have little crochet needles, but if I just do a little finger crochet like that to make my own little tendrils, how would that look? Not amazing. Do I just need to cut into it a lot more? See, there's not one single spot in hers that ends in a finger like that. They all kind of tendril up like that. And so I'm not off to a great start here. I'm trying to shape these little bits into a tendril. It's a good thing my thread is a good match because I'm making like a million little stitches here. It would look really pretty bad, I think, if I didn't have a good match in my thread. And what I'm trying to do is sort of stretch those up a little bit without just pulling them right off because each of those little loops because that yarn is cut there you know it's just a very short piece of yarn in there so it comes out way more easily than I really had planned for but of course it makes sense <laughs> so maybe I'll do this across like get as much kind of like I don't know cut into stitch down I'll do this the whole way across and then maybe, what if I did some stitching in this? <sighs> that might work better than my little crochet loops. Maybe I should try that 
before I get too far along here. It's looking a bit junky, isn't it? I'm gonna try just a little small chain stitch. Okay, I'm gonna keep playing around like that, see what it turns out like. I'll check back in with you in a minute, and if I've learned anything, I'll let you know. So, excellent news. After a lot of playing around, I have learned how to make tendrils. I'm super excited about it, but sometimes I get too excited and I start jumping in before I really have worked out my idea. So I finally did get smart and instead of trying it out center front of the jacket, like that's where I started. I don't know what I was thinking, but anyway, I finally got smart and started playing around on the pockets. There. And I have found a really nice way of making these like long, tenderly looking things. It looks like the sweater is sort of growing up onto the jacket. I think that's really, really cool. So I think I'm going to do it almost entirely on the sewing machine. I thought this was going to be all done by hand. That's what she's doing in the video all by hand. And I watched that video a whole bunch of times and I slowed it down, but it still skips so much. So I think I've got it, but I still don't know how I'm going to do the sleeves, right? I can't get into here with the machine very easily. So the sleeve might have to be a different technique by hand. Hopefully I can make it look the same. So anyway, let me take you to the machine and show you what I've worked out. So these are the tendrils that I've successfully made. I've made two, but you can see for the rest of it, I've cut into it a lot. And so I'm going to be sewing those down. That's just step one though. Adding these longer tendrils, that's the magic. So I'm back at my machine and I think what I'm going to do first at the side seams, I'm going to start at the bottom and just sew right in the ditch of the seam all the way up just to keep that kind of anchored. And I'm starting at the bottom and coming up so that if I do need some wiggle room, I can take it off the top instead of having like an extra little pouch on the bottom. So now to sew these, I'm using a zigzag stitch that's about three millimeters by three millimeters. And I've got the jacket in kind of in the machine sideways. I'm just going to be sewing forward and back and forward and back all the way kind of up and down these. So that means I pinned, put my pins all pointing the wrong way. Anyway, here we go. I'm gonna spin around. So I'm starting at the center back now because I'm trying to be smarter. <laughs> So you can see what it looks like once it gets zigzagged down. It kind of looks cool. It kind of flattens it out much better than I could do by hand. Right? It's looking kind of cool. Oh, I like it. So I, you can see I'm being pretty messy. Like if this showed my stitching, you could see it's like kind of all over the place but it seems to be working. One thing I'm trying to do is to keep them straight. I don't want any of them bending at all. When I was practicing on the pocket, it looked a little bit bent and crooked. It just does not have a good effect. And yes, this is making my sewing room very messy. All these little bits of knit are everywhere. So these little pieces that I'm cutting off, like anywhere that it looks too kind of congested, I can cut off a little piece and then I can actually sew it back on to the top of another section. When I was cutting into it, I wanted a lot of variety in height and I just wanted it to look really, really random. So that's halfway. I'll do the other half and then I'll show you that magical tendril part. Then I finished zigzagging it all and now I'm just giving it a haircut. Any part that's sort of sticking out, I'm chopping off just close to the zigzag and now this is even messier. The idea is to make the cardigan look neater but it's making my room look messier. And yes, I sewed it all through you know through all the layers even right through the lining i'll show you what the lining looks like right now it looks kind of cool it looks almost like corset work i have to vacuum up this mess but look at the lining see that it looks kind of beautiful i do have a black bobbin in i think yeah black bobbin sewing along like that it just i think that looks really gorgeous on the lining okay tendril time so to make the tendrils, once I have this under the presser foot, it's hard to make sure that I'm going straight up. So I'm drawing little lines with my scrap of soap here because it doesn't 
look great if you get them kind of on an angle. I want them going straight up. So I've drawn lines all the way across. And now to make these little tendrils, there are no yarns that run vertically on a knit, right? All the yarns run across. So there's nothing to pull up. So to get yarns that I can make go up, I need to pull some off of the sweater. And of course they come off all wiggly like this, which is great. So what I've been doing is just kind of letting them pile up in that little squiggle and zigzagging it down. That is it. And I think that's going to be nice. And I think that's, that might be what she's doing in the video too. I think so. It's really hard to tell it goes so fast. Even when I play it in a slower setting, it's still really hard to tell what she's stitching down to it. So I think that this works nicely. I'm very afraid of what I'm going to be doing on the sleeves here, because how do I get in to do that same effect? And I really do want to have it on the sleeve. It looks so nice when it's kind of all at the same level, but how do I get in there? So the sleeve might have to be done by hand. So I will be taking off half of the elbows, uh, the elbow patch, getting the knit under there. I've got that. And then sewing the elbow patch back on it might all have to be done by hand. So let's get this part done and then continue. So my zigzag is three by three and I've got my whole little collection of wiggly threads here and it's pretty uh, loosey-goosey. So there, that's all there is to it. And then little bits that are sticking out, I can cut off. So that's pretty easy. So that's basically the process. Does it capture hers? I don't really know, but it has its own personality. So I'm gonna keep going like that, make my tendrils all the way across, and then figure out what to do with the sleeves. All the tendrils on the body are sewn, so now it's time for another haircut, which means another big mess in my sewing room. I love these little scissors. There's a link to them in the uh, description box. They're just so handy. I've been using them all the time these days. Okay, I just cannot put the sleeves off any longer. First of all, the safety pins have to go, and then the little buttons have to go. And then the lower part of the elbow patch needs to come off. I think that will look nice to have the elbow patch covering part of the sweater. I think that'll look good. Okay, I am quite scared about doing these sleeves. I'm just gonna have to figure this out. So one sleeve is basically done. I haven't reattached the elbow patch yet, but the tendrils are all on the sleeve. I had to do that all by hand. And so you know what, it took me more than two hours to do that one sleeve. Oh my goodness. So now the elbow patch, I do like it. I think I'm gonna sew it back on, but it's starting to delaminate. Like this is not a real leather starting to delaminate so I pondered I have a leather scrap I pondered maybe I would just make new elbow patches but you know what I'd have to sew it on by hand this one I can sew on by hand at least it's got like needle holes punched in there already for me and I think I'll be able to sew that on by hand without too much difficulty starting from a new piece of leather that's a whole other video in itself so and it's something I can do later right I don't have to replace that elbow patch now. It can totally be done later. So I'm gonna show you how I did the sleeve. I am thoroughly in love with the jacket. I love it so much. I keep trying it on and I just wanna wear it. I can't open up the sleeve and do this flat, mainly because the sleeve is a two-piece sleeve. So there's a seam here and a seam here. There's the under sleeve and upper sleeve. Whereas the cardigan sleeve is just one piece sleeve with one seam. So the seams shouldn't line up. And also it's lined, like it's everything. So I can't just open up the sleeve and do it flat. That's why I'm having to do it by hand. So to get this sleeve on, I can't line up the seams the way I did on the side seam here. So I wanna just get this cable kind of in line with the top of the sleeve here. 
and I want to get the seam of the sleeve in line with the side seam of the jacket. Now you can see the jacket is getting, you know, it is already a little bit pilly and then it's got all of the extra pills that I've been putting on it. So I think at the end I'll go over the whole top part of the jacket with my Go Golden sweater shaver. I think that'll make a nice difference. So with the sleeve in line and I'm just bringing the black edge of the cardigan past the jacket and the sweater has to stretch a little bit. But once I steam that into place, it's gonna be just fine. Like the cardigan will accommodate the jacket, no problem. Okay, so the only machining I can do is around this bottom edge, that is it. So I'm just gonna be sewing on here and just catching the edge of the jacket. Everything else, like I just can't, I tried getting this into the machine and the free arm makes no difference at all because I'm not really sewing this way, I'm sewing this way, right? And so the free arm does not help. So then with it in place now, I wanna just cut more into the edge. And in fact, where the elbow patch is going to cover, let me just make sure I've got these looking the same. So I'm noticing that on this sleeve, I've got that cable coming just to the outside of the elbow patch. So I'll just turn that a bit, just so the two look the same. I don't want the elbow patch to look all lumpy and bumpy, so I'm kind of like cutting it down underneath there quite a bit. So lots of like cutting into it. Sometimes making something random is harder than making it even, do you know what I mean? So it's kind of the same, except for where I put the tendrils on. And you know what, it was quite pleasant to do it by hand. It did take forever, but it's a pleasant job. And whenever I'm doing like a project like that, where I know I'm gonna be a little while, I just plunk myself in front of the TV or at the counter with my family. It's a nice way to pass time, right? I like having my hands busy, so it's pleasant. So I'm not complaining about the two hours, it was nice. So to be able to sew these, I've got a, just a heavy piece of plastic. This is just a granola bag. So I'm putting that inside the sleeve. If you have one of those like bendable uh, cutting boards, that would work too. Or sometimes the plastic that comes at the bottom of a shopping bag works nicely. But my granola bag is doing the trick for me here. So with my double thread, I'm just going around once trying to stitch over the edge. I'm trying to get it to look just as flat as it does in the body where I was able to use the machine. It's nicely flattened out there. When you're stitching by hand, I'm not gonna be able to flatten out the edge quite as much, but I'll be going around twice. So I'm going all the way around just to get these like little hills and valleys sewn down. And then I'll go around a second time and adding in the tendrils on that second way around. So it's, you know, it's not hard. It's quite pleasant. I enjoy this kind of work. It's an overcast stitch going right over the edge. So it's pretty straightforward and easy. In fact, if you, th this whole project you could do by hand, right? The whole body I could have done. It just would have taken a long, long time. But. As I say, it's a pleasant way to pass the time, so why not? I've had to tie off and get a new thread so many times though, and I keep leaving it too late. Such a amateur mistake where I sew down too far and then I can't tie a proper knot. So be smarter than that. Tie off a knot and start with a new thread before you get your thread too short to tie a proper knot. So sewing on the tendrils by hand, and I think this really is exactly what she's doing in that video with my granola bag in place. So I just got a little scrap of the wiggly yarn and I can kind of overlap it a bit. And then it's just really a matter of stitching it down. That is it. And again, still with the same overcast stitch and I'm kind of going over the yarn through it a little bit. And then when it looks tall enough, I've been folding it down and then stitching back down. And I really wanna go over those loops and get them just looking a little bit flatter, but still squiggly. And I did try to get used to using the thimble. It helps for sure, because this is a lot of pushing this needle through reasonably thick fabric, but you know, a 
long time of hand sewing in my life where I never did really use a thimble. So I'll go up and down all the edges of these peaks and valleys just to kind of re-secure those. And just at the top of each of the peak, I'll put well, generally just one, maybe sometimes two tendrils. Like here I'm doing two because it's a little bit of a, I don't know, wider peak. Okay, I'll go all the way around like that, putting all those tendrils on. Okay, so I finally realized just how bad and how delaminated these elbow patches are. And I can't put that bag on. That's just too sad. So I've got my bigger piece of leather here. I think I'll just use the original piece as a little pattern. I'm going to draw these ovals. So hopefully I can see that pen line. You might not be able to see it at all, but pen sort of shows up reddish on the black leather. And I'll just sew around with no thread. Right, I don't actually want stitches there. I just want to punch the holes. So I'm sewing on the elbow patch and I am just doing it as a running stitch. I played around using a blanket stitch and a back stitch, but it is no fun sewing this on. I'm using my thimble for sure because pushing through this leather, even though I do have needle holes punched in there from sewing around it, it's still no fun. And so I think that sewing it around by hand isn't super pro looking, but the whole thing has this deconstructed feel to it and look to it. So I think that the hand sewn running stitch is just fine. And that's all I got to give. That's all I have left to give. So I've got one done. I think it looks just fine. I am definitely glad that I didn't just sew back on the one that was the fake leather that was all delaminating and looking really scruffy. It wouldn't have felt good to go through all this work and then sew that yucky one back on. That wouldn't have made any sense at all. So even though I'm not having fun at the moment, it will be worth it. I'll finish up with this elbow patch. And then it's just a matter of sewing the buttons back on. I put a little bit more of the sweater coming out of the breast pocket just because it was, seemed like it was sort of crying out for it. So that was kind of fun. And I just did that on the machine. That took like two minutes. Okay, so I'll just finish this one up. Sew on the buttons. And, oh, and then I might do a little bit with my Ranbu Go Go Lint sweater shaver. And then I'll show you the finished product. Okay, here's the final product. And I know it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea. This raggedy, deconstructed look is definitely not for everybody. But I have to say, I just love it. It's one of my favorite things that I've made in a long time. It feels just heavenly. Like, it feels kind of funky and cool. And it's soft and cozy. I just absolutely adore this jacket. I hope you do too. I hope you enjoyed watching the crazy process. And it was a long process, I'm not going to lie. Just that handwork on the sleeves, like that was ours. But it, as I kept saying, it was pleasant. I enjoyed the process. And so that's a win. And a special thank you and loads of respect to the knitwear designer, Nadia Seradina, who made that original video that I just adored so much. Thank you, Nadia, for the inspiration and the awesome original idea. I love it. So as always, thank you for being along with me right to the end. I really appreciate it. And until next time on Catherine Sews, you take care. <laughs>